Hi sweet babes, welcome back to my channel. So, I was at Starbucks the other day, shocking. There's a middle school up the street from the Starbucks that I go to. Every day when the middle school gets out, a gaggle of middle schoolers take over the Starbucks, bless the baristas. I was sitting near a group of seventh grade girls and I overheard their conversation. It was heartbreaking. These girls who were barely cresting the edges of puberty were talking about how fat they were and what diet they were on and what they were trying to do to lose weight and how they couldn't eat this food or that food. And it was that much more jarring because of their age and the fact that these bodies that these girls were hating were the bodies of children. In my top 10 healthy habits video, which I will link on the screen and in the description box, I talked about one of the best things that I've ever done for myself is to develop a healthy relationship with food. So many of you asked me to share how I developed a healthy relationship with food, so I thought I would make a video and share some of my thoughts and advice in the hopes that some of it might help you. It is awful to be in a dysfunctional relationship with food and I feel your struggle. So if you're looking to make peace with food, keep watching. Why do we have such shitty relationships with food? There's so much I could say on food and ethics, but I'll do my best to keep it brief and not get too political or social justice warrior-y like I tend to do. <laughs> but you guys, we have been fed, literally and figuratively, confusing messages about nutrition, diets, food, our bodies, and all of this somehow got tied into our worth as people, and especially as women. Our society has created this narrative of fat versus thin, perfection versus failure, good food versus bad food. It's no wonder that so many of us struggle with our weight and our body image and fall victim to disordered eating, yo-yo dieting, miss out on actual nutrition, and develop weird obsessions with our bodies and food. The actual food industry is a mess. Most food products in stores are engineered by scientists to get us hooked on crap and sugar. Sugar we all know is highly addicting, is added to 74% of products in grocery stores, and that's not just the sweet things. That's like random things that sugar should not be in. They stick it in there, get you addicted to crap. So think about when you were a kid, like a kid kid. You never thought about food, right? You ate when you were hungry, at snack time. You never thought about carbs or counting calories. But then if you're like me, as soon as middle school hits, that's when the food plus body obsession begins. Just like I saw with those seventh graders at Starbucks. I feel like this should be a tea talk because I'm about to spill some tea. Tea talk on my tea and glitter channel. I like it. Tea talks. Welcome to the first official tea talk on tea and glitter. Also, dating women has been a huge and scary eye opener into how all of this works. I've watched so many of the girls I've dated have these unhealthy and twisted relationships with food and be surprisingly stubborn about it all. Okay, so the truth is, is that we have to shut out all the noise and the marketing and stop seeing food as the enemy. We need to understand what our bodies want and need. We have to learn about nutrition, ignore the fad diets, and get back to basics. So I'm gonna share with you guys my own backstory. I was right there with you. When I hit middle school, that's when the messages of thin equals beautiful started seeping into my world. I would eat what was convenient and what was cheap and what I thought tasted good at the time. I did not feel healthy. I felt kind of doughy. I was like skinny fat. And while I felt like crap, I continued to eat like crap, all while craving to be what the magazines told me to be, which was skinny. Now there's nothing wrong with wanting to be slim, but what happens is that we start depriving ourselves of crucial nutrients, cutting out entire food groups, going on cleanses and crazy ass diets. That's, Banksy, we're talking about serious things. Okay, you tell them what's up. All of this is a dangerous game that can backfire into a starve, binge, hate yourself cycle. And that's exactly where I found myself. I would be eating these like diet foods thinking that they were healthy for me. And then I would binge on crap because I was restricting myself so much with these diet foods because I wanted to be thin. But then, oh my God, there's like a pizza and I just like crave it. And then I binge and then I hate myself and I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh my God, am I gonna get fat? Like. It was such 
a stupid cycle, especially the hating myself part. So how did I end up with a much healthier relationship with food? One where I don't obsess, where I don't feel guilty, where I feel super balanced and awesome. It started at a very superficial level, like I wanted to look a certain way. The things I was eating weren't giving that to me. Even though I was eating like healthy diet foods and not really feeding myself very much at all. So I started looking into what would give me that body and surprise, surprise, it was wholesome foods and real nutrition, which was super annoying, honestly, because at the time I thought that healthy food was inconvenient, expensive, eating well meant that I had to cook, right? <sighs> Here's the secret, guys. Turns out that eating well does not require a ton of money, it doesn't require a ton of time, and it doesn't mean that I have to spend hours cooking. I'm basically like a super healthy frat boy and I hate cooking. And at the time, I was also worried that healthy food wouldn't just be inconvenient, but it would taste like rabbit food. Once I started incorporating whole healthy foods into my world, I stopped enjoying the taste of shitty food. Once I started eating whole foods and cutting out the processed crap, then the body that I actually wanted started to emerge from that sluggish, doughy, skinny fat person. So the next step for me to develop a healthy relationship with food was reassessing how much food I actually needed. I know a lot of people overeat, but I realized that I was under eating. And I think a lot of girls under eat because we're afraid of getting fat because fat means we failed at life, right? I could no longer identify hunger cues in my body. That starve, binge, hate myself cycle had completely knocked out my body's instincts on food. And I've watched so many girlfriends of mine, and I mean that like not in a straight way. <laughs> it's always so funny when you hear a straight girl be like, my girlfriends, and I'm like, you have Oh wait, 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 okay, you're just like girls you're friends with. So girlfriends of mine have done the same thing. Did you eat today? And they'll be like, yeah, I had like half a bagel this morning and it's like 8 p.m. and I'm like, so I started to become more mindful of my own hunger cues and that really helped me make better decisions about what I was eating. So just like when you're dating a girl, right? You need to listen to her when she talks to have a healthy relationship. You need to listen to your body to have a healthy relationship with it. Just like your girl's gonna tell you what's up with her, your body's gonna tell you what's up with it as long as you stop ignoring it. Now just because I eat well does not mean I don't indulge. That's all part of having a healthy relationship with food. I can throw down on a cupcake and feel no guilt because I know a cupcake is a treat and a treat is a beautiful, wonderful thing as long as my body's nutritional needs are being met. The 80-20 rule, guys. You can eat well, give your body what it needs 80% of the time and then at 20% you can do whatever you want. I had to stop thinking that treats were bad things and that I should never have them and that I should restrict myself against it all, all the time, 100% of the time. Because I eat well and holy most of the time, a treat doesn't phase me anymore. I no longer feel endless amounts of guilt or beat myself up. Which leads me to my last piece of advice, and it might be my favorite, most important piece of advice. I really, really hope you take into consideration and adopt into your life. Stop the negative self-talk. Here's the big lesson that I learned, and I want any of you who are struggling with food to understand this. Some foods are better for your well-being than others, but no food is evil or benevolent. If you deviate from eating well and eat some junk food, it has nothing to do with your worth as a person. A healthy relationship means you find balance with food. It's intentional movement to eat clean, sweat, even enjoying that cupcake or whatever you want your 20% to be. Balance is not about perfection. Binging and dieting and all that is like an out of control pendulum. You're just swinging around, but happiness and health are attained when you find balance. Now balance doesn't mean that you are 100% eating well all the time forever and you live in this very rigid, restricted world. None of us is perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. You're pretty close. You're pretty close to being perfect. We will all swing a little from time to time and that's okay. Accept who you are, love who you are, build a lifestyle around what makes you feel good, makes your body work well, not some abstract concept of perfection. Punishing yourself for failing is unhealthy, unproductive. I'm gonna tell you guys, it makes me feel so good to no longer hate my body. Do not fear food, to freaking eat. And I hope that some of this will help you all find that peace and that balance with food. All right guys, that's all I have for you today. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments below if you think I should start this series, because I'm thinking of kind of doing this new thing on my channel where my like 
sit down and chat with you guys videos are like my tea time. Like you and I can like have some tea and like you can have coffee or whatever you're into. We can just like chat and I can tell you all these things that I think and feel. And then the glitter side of my channel will be my vlogs and all of the burlesque shenanigans that I do. What do you think? So let me know. I love you guys so much. Have a beautiful, beautiful week. And I hope you get to enjoy a cupcake. Love you. See you in the next video. Bye.